Hey, welcome to Flight Test. I'm Josh, and this is Josh. Hi. And today we have the Cessna 170 from Flex <laughs> Innovations. Never seen that before. No. Pretty intimidating, huh? Not really. Hey, Alex, you want me to do stupid stuff with it or good stuff? <laughs> All right, cool. I'm gonna try a little bit lower hover, okay? So you said Bob has a plane that looks like this. Do you think? Do you, do you think Bob would ever have done this in him? Never. <laughs> Crazy. Look how flat that is. You're such a good pilot. No, I'm yes. a terrible pilot. That's no. a testimony of the airplane. Look at that. This guy is huge. It is huge. And a matter of fact, with one big thing with big planes, and this is going to be a review on this. Huge planes are intimidating people because yeah. transportation, setup, all that means time spent. And we've done quite a few big planes in the past, like the Carbon Z Cub, the, uh, the Trojan. Mm -hmm. It took up a lot of room and it took a couple people quite a while to put them together. Right, so how long does this take to put together? Roughly five minutes. Really? Yeah, the biggest headache I had with this was not the assembly or even the travel. It was these four screws on the very top right here. Because you gotta get them all perfectly had, aligned. Had to get them lined up. The okay. thing I love the most about it was the struts. These have functional struts, but instead of being plastic, they're really nice, durable metal struts that plug in and you have a cotter pin and you're done. Yeah. It's now really you can actually get this in a night fly version too, right? Yep, both the floats and the wing come as night fly versions. This is not the night fly version, but ironically, you can see there's lights in there. Yeah. The What's only difference, there's no lead coming up here. It looks like they just stopped it dead right oh. there. So my guess is, is if you cut that open and maybe ran a wire, you could have a night flight version. Okay. They do have a driver that you can program the lights to as well, which I thought was really cool. There's a driver in there? There's a, a, a driver for the lights. little man. Hi, buddy. <laughs> be safe. And it also has a, a wide power range, too. So it looks like it's going to be able to take off from the ground really easily. It has huge it, uh, wheels on it. It has really beautiful big wheels that are hard as a rock. Oh, really? They look like they're soft. They look like they're soft. They look really high quality. The only downside about that I see is they're, they're not soft. I would rather have had 25 bucks more to the price point of the plane and had nice, soft, you know, rubbery wheels. That you can hit somebody with. Yeah, the Timber was a great example, and the uh, the Fun Cub XL was a really good example. But you shouldn't hit anybody with them. You should not hit anybody with them, no. And the landing gear on the back, you see when I wiggle the sweater back and forth? You hey, see he he <laughs> That's from the landing gear, or the, the tail wheel. The tail wheel, when I put this together, was actually bent straight down. We had to actually bend it back to make it trail a little better. I probably could have made it go farther, but there's a real long moment, which makes it really springy in the back. Gotcha. But it shouldn't be on the ground too long. No, it's not supposed to be. It's no. supposed to be up there. Let's let's put it up there. Let's put it up there? Okay. All right. So in this plane right now, we have the uh, 5200 four cell battery, and that's about the lightest you want to go. This will go between a four cell and a six cell, so we should have a nice scale flight experience. All right, you want to put it in the air? Yes. All righty. Let's do that. So this is our first time flight experience, and also we have this dialed in the control board. If you see when I give rudder, there's actually a control board in there that's gonna dial out and dial in aileron and mixes that we had. We went ahead and set this up exactly for our instructions, so uh, let's see what happens. Okay. All right, a little nervous. Big planes and... You got lots of room, Josh. Woo! All right, wow. You know what's crazy? It flies like a scale plane. Let me go ahead and trim this out just a little bit here. Very smooth flight. Looks awesome. I'm just trimming out the ailerons a little bit right now. There we go. A little bit of up trim. And the one thing I noticed, it wants to constantly bank to the right. I keep trimming this out and I'm not getting any response. What I'm wondering is uh, this thing is actually calibrated for torque and everything. Uh -huh. I think we just needed to get a little bit trimmed, but that feels good. Bank to the right that, or the left? That's hands off. It's uh, banking to the left. There we go. Very easy plane to fly. You definitely want to fly the wing. The power band is really respectful. You're not going to punch out of anything really quick. Let's go ahead and pop one nacho flaps. There we go. Pushing down a little bit, slowing it up. It's so cool. It looks, it looks scale. It looks really I mean, to my untrained eye, it looks like a real plane. It's very easy to fly. Look how it slows down. All right. Second nacho like flaps. Stopped. Yeah. Now, wow. This is designed by Kike Samanzini, the same person that had tremendous input in a lot of the Carbon Z series. So uh, I'm noticing with the uh, flaps on any input of throttle, I'm really pegging down on the uh, on the elevator. But that's totally normal, even in, in a full-scale aircraft. So it wants to climb every time? Yeah, okay. just wants to put your nose up. But really good, respectable slow flight. Flaps are gone. We're back to a nice slippy platform. So one thing Kike loves is he obviously loves the scale lines, and this has a really true, legitimate scale scheme on this. Matter of fact, our dear friend Bob Parmalee mm -hmm. had one almost identical to this. Let's 
go ahead and put it for just a quick attach go, and then uh, we'll take it back up. And I want you to fly it. I want to fly it. Look at that tail high attitude it has coming in. That's awesome. Nice. Alright, Josh, how about if I take it up and I uh, hand you the controls, bro? Yeah, give me a few mistakes. Alright, I'll get you a few mistakes high. All right, I'm gonna bring it around. Okay. I'm gonna hand it to you. Okay. We're gonna be about two thirds throttle, and you're gonna see that speed I fly. It yeah. goes a little bit fast, but it's, it's pretty normal. Okay. That's about the speed oh, you wanna hi. take it. There you go. Woo! The big monster. It huh? is. I don't remember the last time I flew something this big. Because no. this is bigger than the timber, right? I flown. Yeah, it definitely is bigger than the timber. It's actually bigger than both Carbon Z Cub and the Carbon Z uh, T28. And the reason I bring this up is we haven't had too much experience with super large foamies. Uh, but I'll tell you honestly, what I've experienced so far with this, I like this much more than the Carbon Z Cub for a couple different reasons. The, uh, the flight envelope feels real nice. It feels like a very scale airplane you want to fly, but when I slowed it down, it didn't need any gyro stabilization. As a matter of fact, the, the control board only seems to be taking out the input of the uh, of mixes. It yeah. just gives you the mixes and gives you some pre, uh, preset cali calibrations, I guess mm -hmm. you could say, where it mixes rudder and, uh, and all around together, but no gyros. And even with no gyros, the plane feels incredibly stable. Yeah, it's very cool. It's nice because you can fly farther away. And, and you, you still, still see it, it. yeah. <laughs> you see Alex up there, he's just like this little angry right, speck yeah. behind you. I know, he's making me nervous too. You feel how it still wants to roll a little bit though? Yep. That kind of bothers me, I want to find out the reason why. It may just be a linkage issue that we got to address. Yeah. Could be something else, but we'll uh, we'll figure that out. Yeah, I'm having to like kind of constantly stay on the uh, ailerons. Yes. To keep, it, uh, to keep it right. Very cool. It does look incredible in the air. And it does want to roll. Yeah, you know what? Let me feel that out. I wonder we'll if we have wind up there too. It could be a little bit, but it shouldn't be rolling that much. You want to take it? Yeah, I'll take it here. We're going to put it for landing. We'll, we'll adjust the ailerons on it, and then maybe what we'll do is we'll go ahead and put a... Uh, the weird thing is you give it a little bit of roll this way, and then you throttle back. I think it goes the other way, doesn't it? Mm-hmm. Maybe it just wants to do a roll. Maybe we should drop this flat. Hey, buddy. That's pretty cool. <laughs> Did you see the draw shot? He's like, okay, I'm happy. <laughs> All right, so That's what awesome. do you say we uh, we throw a six cell in this thing, okay. and we flip the couple modes up and get ourselves our full 3D rate. And we'll go crazy. And see what it can do. Okay. All right, let's do it. All right, so we have a six cell 8,000 milliamp, which is a little bit bigger than what they expect, but it's the only one we had. It's a brick. It is a brick. It's huge. And I gave it a little pulse of energy, mm -hmm. and energy is an understatement. So, so we're ready to go crazy. We're ready to go crazy, and to share some of that crazy, we're going to bring in TJ here and play passive because transfer. Because he is him. the epitome of crazy. Yep. And we also made some adjustments to our sub trims and dialed a little bit more. So now my Come on, trims are right. centered up again. Why are you being weird? He's all, he's been all excited about this. Touch me. All right, you ready? Right, yeah. <laughs> Let's take this up. Let me say. Oh man, I'm a little timid. <laughs> Yikes! Well, there, there we go. There's your. There's your. Okay. <laughs> Let's just get up the height. Now it's become a bush plane apparently. All right, now there's a couple different modes. I'm gonna go into crazy mode here and see how it does. Well, there's a knife edge. That's a little high though, huh? Not really. It's, it's, it's big enough, <laughs> it's, it's not high at all. Hey Alice, I'm gonna dive it with the flaps, okay? Power dive. That is so good. Look how high the tail is. <laughs> Flaps off. All right, TJ, you want to uh, play with it before I destroy it, and then I'll come back for round two. Yeah. All right, here you go. Still has a little bit of that roll to the right, but you can kind of you can kind of work it out. I accidentally hit the flaps and it oh. decided I wanted to go straight up. I was wondering, I was like, oh, you, you really wanted to pull that hard, didn't you? <laughs> no, I hadn't touched it yet. It just decided it it, it wanted so, to take a break. So typical cruise has gone from where you're about 60% cruising to now you're about 40% cruising. You can still fly nice and slow with it, but the responsive nature on it when it's all the way in advanced mode is pretty awesome. Dude, it, wow, it looks so cool. Like yeah, awesome. so beautiful. So that's that's neutral stick. Yeah. Okay, so we overcompensate. Yeah. How's that? Perfect. So generally when you're attacking trims, attack your yaw surfaces first. First take care of your elevator, then take care of your uh, your aileron, then take care of your rudder. Reason being is the ear. Yeah. Huh? Ear. Ear? E-A-R. Oh my gosh, yeah! yeah. <laughs> Just like everybody's oh. got two That's ears. awesome! Yeah. Here, I <laughs> Why am I yeah. getting hugged so much? Because we, now we have check crap and, crap and ear. And we have ear. Yeah. 
Are you, really cool. You got okay. Crap in your ear. Yeah. The reason you want to, the reason you want to take out your pitch control first is if it's diving to the ground and you don't adjust that first while you're dressing everything else, you're gonna have to constantly keep it from crashing. So if you have something where it always wants to pitch down, take it up high, nice and high first, and then pull it up into an up attitude, and then catch it with up trim as a crest there. And that check way, check your ear. Check your ear. See, I'm learning stuff in this episode already. Just over, basically over control it to the, the portion or to the direction that, that's. Uh, the most safe, I guess you can say, that's going to keep you from crashing, and then catch it with your trim. What I just did for you trying to reach down is a very dangerous way to do it. It's better if you actually trim out your own machine. Such a nice flying bird. Josh, you want to do it? It's just awesome seeing the amount of power that it has with that 6L. I know. <laughs> Being so it's big so cool. and so noticeable. It makes you want to fly a plane, not scale. Right. And it has plenty of speed, plenty of lift. Take Such a wonderful day. Yeah. yeah, we're really happy because we haven't had this one. Hey, Alex, you want me to do stupid stuff with it or good stuff? Whatever you want to do, tell me what you're going to do. All right, cool. I'm going to try a little bit lower hover, okay? So you said Bob has a plane that looks like this. You do, you think, to, right? do, you, do you think Bob would ever have done this in his? Never. Not in a million years. <laughs> That's so cool. Crazy. Yeah, yeah, sorry, he, he used to have a plane like this. Yeah, Bob, Bob, uh, they got rid of this plane, I believe, for like a 175. Gotcha. I just watched this ready, and full throttle. And down. Wow. There we go. That's so cool! Oh, I lost my hatch! <laughs> I know what that is, too. That's my rear hatch. I just taped it in because we wanted to show the control board. All right, well, now that we don't have a hatch, let's go ahead and... Uh, <laughs> take it up and do another one of those awesome flat spins. That was so cool. It looked amazing. <laughs> Look how flat that is. You're such a good pilot. No, I'm yes. a terrible pilot. That's no. a testimony to the airplane. Look at that. It's <laughs> <laughs> crazy. It That's sounds awesome. so mean. All right, I'll bring it closer to us. Maybe I can bring. All right, you ready? <laughs> that is so cool. It reminds me of last summer and the Sea Duck. <laughs> this is a sub $500 monster, and it really performs well. What a great flying bird! How low could I take this? Uh, as slow as it's falling, you could probably land it. <laughs> that's awesome. Dude, that's so awesome. I think I enjoy flying aerobatics with this more than an aerobatic bird. It's just because it looks so cool going through the air. Yeah. Hey, Alice, I'm going to try a uh, rolling circle, okay, bro? Okay, man, I'll try to keep up. There we go. Just <laughs> oh, I, ah. nice. I never can do blenders. I'm terrible with them. All right, one last thing, and we'll go ahead and put it for a landing. I don't know how much <laughs> battery we have. I'd say a lot. <laughs> we'll find out. Yes. Yeah, it's... It looks crazy. All right, let's drop our flaps and bring her in. That's awesome. I've never had so much fun playing past the transmitter. What a great bird. <laughs> oh, I was man. really shocked. Look how slow it's coming in now. Mm -hmm. It's got so many different characteristics. <laughs> yeah. She has to put it tail high. There we are. Very cool. <laughs> so awesome. All right, you know what? I'm so happy we did a review and not a challenge because I got a lot of really good things about this. What do you think, man? Yeah, that's awesome, man. It's a, such a cool platform. Um, I love the size. I yeah. love the size. Very cool. Yeah, very key, easy to keep it orientated, especially from long yep. distance away. You didn't yeah. have to keep it real close to you. Yeah. Yeah, one thing I really loved about it was the, the, the split personality. You could fly out of four cell, very scale flight experience, very easy to fly. Uh, the flaps are really good. And then the tune they had on there when you picked the rudder, the way it would mix in your aileron was really nice. You know, it didn't want to drop the tip or anything like that. 
but then when you put the six cell on it, it's a yeah. whole nother beast. Yeah, for sure. Yeah. yeah, for me, it was just being able to go slow with it, yeah. but having so much more power just to get out of trouble if you need to. Right, yeah. yeah. It felt so good. Oh, I want cool. one. <laughs> <laughs> well, I think we're going to be taking this up a lot more. We do have floats for this, but we're not going to be reviewing the floats because, Bob Parmel, if you're watching this, we know that you lost your plane a long time ago because they sold it, and you wish you had it back. We're gonna give this to you, buddy. Yeah, Bob, we love you, man. This is for you. And we wanna see Bob actually fly this when we do a uh, floats review with Floats it. review, you yeah. got it. All and right. if you don't remember Bob, you might remember him from the control line episode. <laughs> when we almost killed him. When we almost killed Bob. <laughs> <laughs> so this is like an apology to Bob. Yeah, this yeah. is to make it up. Thank you for not suing us, Bob. <laughs> <laughs> love you, man. Yeah, Fred Wallace, thank you for watching. Thank you for being part of the flight test family. And we put out more content ever. This is a civilian aircraft, uh, a model of a full scale version. If you haven't tuned in lately, we've actually taken on that genre of, of general aviation. So tune in on Saturdays, and better yet, just subscribe and hit the right, notification yeah. bell because we have up to six to seven episodes a week now. We don't want you to miss any of it. It's crazy. All right, thanks you guys for watching. See you next time. Bye.